at what's coming up and that of course is the fourth South African investment conference which is set to kick in uh, or kick off I should say on Thursday this week. This year's event will focus on South Africa remaining a key investment destination despite the impact of COVID-19. The summit which was postponed last year is limited to 1,000 delegates due to COVID-19 regulations. The South African investment conference was inaugurated by President Cyril Ramaphosa in 2018 where he committed to raising over 1.2 2 trillion rands worth of investments over a five-year period to spearhead investment in the country. To speak to us a little bit about this, we have uh, invited Trudy Makaya, who is a special economic advisor to the president. Trudy, nice to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Leon, and good morning to your viewers. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about this. So we didn't see the investment summit taking place in its uh, its usual way last year, but it's back again. 2018 is when it started, as we mentioned in the introduction. Talk to us about what to expect this time. So you're right, we didn't have uh, one last uh, November, as we'd had a few in November before that, uh, because of various considerations mostly related to the pandemic. Now, this week, we will have um, uh, the conference, as you mentioned, a thousand delegates. And, you know, the format really is it, a two-way street. It's about government um, addressing investors and the business community in terms of the progress that it has made over the past um, year or so in terms of new policy developments. Uh, we know, for instance, in telecommunications, in energy in agriculture, in various industries, um, there have been policy developments that are positive uh, in terms of unlocking things that have been difficult in the past for investment. So mm -hmm. if you look at the spectrum auction, if you look at um, land uh, acquisition policies that have been announced, uh, if you look at the freeing up um, of the self-generation and better generation threshold, we've made some progress in terms of the reforms that would enable um, greater economic growth and greater investment. On the other hand, we also expect business itself um, to come share its messages about how it sees the prospects for the country, but more importantly, the investment commitments that it has made in the past, in past conferences, how those are going, and also future investment um, um, uh, commitments. So highlights would include, you know, significant um, new investments. We're also going to have a bit more of a focus on our relationship with the rest of the African continent. Uh, so people should look out for investments um, along those lines. All right. So I want to get a bit of a, an understanding between a pledge and an actual investment. So, I mean, 774 billion rand worth of pledges that were made at the third investment summit. So, you know, what does it actually mean? How, 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 how does it work? So how it works is that we would get a sense from companies uh, in terms of their new investments um, that we're going to undertake. Um, some of these we would know um, during just the normal course um, of the work of the investment promotion agencies when investors come and say, we're contemplating this, but we're facing a certain kind of challenge. Others, of course, we wouldn't know about, particularly if there are no real um, issues. So um, the teams in government would work through to understand um, the, the quality of that investment pledge, its likelihood uh, of being implemented. And then uh, if it meets certain requirements, it would form part of the announcements that are made uh, at the conference and that are published. Now, after that, the real work begins to really track that the investment is happening, but also to work with the company if they're facing any obstacles that government can fix. Um, so those would be more policy and regulatory um, obstacles that hamper progress, be it um, a permit taking too long, be it lack of clarity on a certain issue. Uh, and of course, as I said earlier, some might not have um, you know, too many challenges. Mm. And then we would get reporting from the company uh, in terms of when the money starts um, getting spent and how much um, has been spent. So we know from the um, 770 or so that had been committed over the years that at least 400 uh, billion uh, has been spent in some form or shape in, in terms of building a factory, uh, opening up a new line of production. Um, for some of them, a number of them, we would also have had um, either government ministers or even the president 
go and launch um, when that operation starts. So you would have seen um, the president visiting Aspen, for instance, uh, the president visiting Ford, the, the president visiting Dubai Trade Port, uh, over time, Mercedes, so um, Vedanta in the Northern Cape. So when those investments come to fruition, we often we track uh, and sometimes often have some milestone um, launch event. Obviously, there are over 300 individual pledges. So we can't always attend to uh, every significant milestone, but we make sure that those are actually uh, realized. So, Trudy, so well, I, I suppose the, qu the question needs... Uh, uh, thank you. I mean, I think we, we get an idea of how, how that does work. So, But I think the question really is, and I mean, this is what South Africans want to know, how do they benefit from this? Because, you know, there are these these... You know, the talk of the investments and all of this money. I mean, this is a lot of money we're talking about, and yet we still sit with such a, a, a dismal employment rate. So how does this translate into benefits for the normal South African who is starving at this point? So then at various levels. So I think as, as ever, given this target, we really do want to raise as much investment as possible and hopefully even exceed it, uh, because it really... Um, does talk to the intensity of the problems um, that we have. If we're going to solve the employment challenge, we need various interventions, right? Investment is not the only one. But investment is an important one because that is how we get productive um, capacity into the economy. So if I look at the kinds of investments um, that have been made, for instance, uh, where data centers, um, have been opened across the country. These create a lot of jobs uh, in the operations itself, but we often find that they would require energy, so energy companies would come uh, into play. They would require a full um, set of skills, not only high-end skills, and so job creation uh, would occur. We also see investments in mining, where these are often in outlying areas, not in the core metropolitan cities. Um, so in places like Mujala um, in places like the Northern Cape, um, we, you know, where the job creation is not uh, as rapid, but because of those investments, um, you know, often if there's a new mine, um, that's talking to at least a thousand new direct jobs, uh, but there could be even more uh, across um, the value chain. We're also seeing those kinds of investment that may not necessarily create big numbers in of themselves, but in terms of easing logistics and making it easier to do business, mean that many other businesses uh, are able to thrive. So I think the important thing is really around the job creation um, mm. that we see. Mm. Uh, we've seen a great spread um, of those investments, even though we know there are provinces and, and areas where we still need to really focus um, to make sure that um, it's not, you know, we break the spatial concentration. So I would say job creation uh, is one Secondly, um, technology transfer. Uh, we've had investments, for instance, in entities like Aspen, uh, where the you know the core of the investment is based on partnership with international players. So, a South African company getting lots of investment, but also technology transfer um, that comes from that. We're going to see a bit more of those deals, okay. particularly in the pharmaceutical sector, because we've argued we need to see skills and technology being transferred uh, into the South African co uh, South African economy and the African continent more yeah, broadly. Yeah. So um, that integrating of South African business into the global economy um, is important. All right, Trudy, I know we'll be doing a lot more. And I, I, I just, uh, unfortunately, having to leave it there this morning, quite a jam-packed show, lots of guests coming up. But I'm glad we got a bit of a preview. That's what's happening on Thursday. And just getting an understanding between um, the commitment and investment and also just hoping that these, obviously, these investments into the country will create that much-needed skills you talk about, but the employment rate. So Trudy Makaya, who is a special economic advisor to the president, talking to us about this upcoming fourth South African investment conference.